Hello and welcome to the preview for SWIFT's 2018 African Regional Conference. I'm joined now by Alan Ras, who is SWIFT's Chief Executive for Asia Pacific, Europe, the Middle East and Africa. Alan, welcome to the Viewfront. Good afternoon, James. Good afternoon. Now, last year's arc was all about financing for the future. This year, it's about transforming the future. Yeah. Um, this is the big theme this year. Yeah. So let me ask you, in what ways is Africa's financial sector transforming and what role is technology mm. playing in this process? Well, I, definitely. I mean, the, the, the continent is transforming, and, and as usual, I, and as I like to say to my people, every time that technology permits something, the evolution of that, people will, will be adopting it and use it actually to their own benefits and leveraging new technology, new, new environments, new offerings for, the, for the, people, the, the public. That is exactly what is happening nowadays in Africa as well. You've heard that one of the first sort of real-time payment schemes actually went live actually in, at the time in Kenya, uh, it was already a few years ago that went live. And following that actually other systems actually came up as well and, and you can see that the industry is trying to leverage new technologies. Obviously that is to the financial, what is true to the financial servicing industry is also true for many other industries in the continent. I'm talking about the health industry, I'm talking about manufacturing, all of that now is extensively using the new technologies to basically addressing the need of the population. I see this happening in there in Africa, but I see this obviously happening in many other parts of the, of the world. We believe that uh, SWIFT can really help this. Actually, I've always told you that the mission of SWIFT is about helping the industry to becoming a lot more efficient, uh, to helping them also to providing the new values and products and services to their own customers, being public, but also obviously being uh, corporate. Uh, that is still our mission, and obviously in, in trying to deliver this, we went also to using our new technologies. And, and there actually, I think, for this conference, we have a lot to say. I mean, you've heard about the, the new GPR services that we've launched back in, in, in January this year. Uh, no later than actually a week from now, I know we're talking about Africa, but I'd like also to talk a little bit about Asia. No later than uh, next week, we are going actually we're going to have the live phase of the NPP platform in Australia, which is the instant payments platform that we are launching. The first that actually that is moving live, and somewhere I do believe that we have ways in which we can replicate this approach in other territories in Africa as well. Of course, I mean it's still some time to go, but there's certainly opportunities for us to helping in, in, this, in the same way the industry in Africa and delivering these uh, real-time services in the, in the continent to corporates and to, and to retail. Obviously, just to finish also, is that obviously that comes with a lot of opportunities and, and, and we SWIFT, we believe that with the banks, with our partners, we can, you know, uh, we can leverage those opportunities. It comes also with challenges, obviously. I mean, when you have uh, everyone or getting access to new technologies, everything at the fingertips, you know, you have also a challenge of cyber, for instance. I mean, obviously, and people don't don't always know what sort of exposure they have actually in the, that they have to face when they use this, those new technologies. There is also something that we we swift are very keen to is educating people, companies, banks also of the risks that uh, you're facing when you're using those new technologies moving forward. Sure, and I want to sort of come to that yeah. later on, but I want to ask you first, talking about innovation, mm -hmm. talking about SWIFT, yeah. we can't escape what you mentioned, which is GPI, yeah. so the, yeah. the Global Payments yeah. Innovation Service. Yeah. Um, where are we at today? What are the developments taking place yeah. now? And mm -hmm. what does the future hold for GPI? Because it's going to have a big impact on the you know, global mm -hmm. payments landscape, mm -hmm. isn't it? The, the way I'm actually, I'm, I'm, uh, when I'm talking to my clients, the way I'm, I'm talking about that, I'm, I'm clearly saying this is perhaps not a revolution, but it's certainly the biggest evolution that a correspondent banking industry is seeing, right? I mean, has seen for the last even 25 years, 20, uh, 30 years. It's really a massive transformation that we bring to that industry. We launched actually the surveys back earlier uh, last year. It was a February, January uh, last year. Uh, since actually it, it went to uh, a massive attractions. I, I've been uh, in our company, as you know, for, for many, many years. Uh, I've never seen such a fast take up of a new service that, that we've launched in full collaboration and coordination with the industry. So today we have about 145 or so and still counting uh, rapidly expanding uh, clients. We have about 40 or more actually of them that are live. We have hundreds of thousands of, of, 
uh, GPI uh, transactions uh, every day, so it's really expanding very fast. But the thing that is perhaps much more interesting is that you know that the, the, one of the key things of, of GPI is the service level agreement that basically bring all these banks together. And, and one of the key things of that is capacity to deliver the payments to the final recipient within the same day. Right? What we've seen with all the payments we see now with GPI is that most of them actually are being delivered within the next 30 minutes. And actually, right. there's also a huge proportion of those, those, those payments that are being delivered within a few minutes, right? Which says what? It says that technology is not really the obstacle anymore, right? I mean, and we have the right technology to allow this. We just need to make sure that the, the SLA being applied on that, the people actually working together, that we can have in the future all these payments being delivered within these few minutes. And then you suddenly say, well, I mean, a few minutes, cross-border, that is real time. I mean, you know, if, if, it, if your payments can get from Europe to Australia or from Australia to Africa within a few minutes, you can say, well, that is actually real time. And from there on, we start thinking about, is there ways in which we can start interconnecting these domestic real-time payment services with GPR and making them actually cross border. That, that's the way we're approaching this. Still a long way to go, mm -hmm. still a long way to go, but, but that's a longer term. It's a long right. term, um, but we want to bring even more value to our clients. Uh, and obviously the, the, the key of the game is making sure that uh, within the next, I would say one year, is that all the banks we have at Swift are GPI compliant. And, right. and we are defining our plans to making sure that that will be feasible by the end of the year. And if we have this, then, then you have the amazing thing with Swift is that you can deliver a payment within a few minutes or half an hour or that, but actually everywhere in the, 1200, in the 212 countries where we're in, with the 11,000 institutions we're in as well. And that will be a huge benefit for corporates, for retail, for banks, and all that. Sure. So we are really on something here. Fast, secure, transparent. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, Alan, thank you very much for your My time pleasure. today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.